Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. This is a very simple short question that was asked by Stephen Robertson, KE0JLG. Um, it's just one line, and I think it's actually the answer is not just one line. The answer is a little bit longer. So the question is, is an HT ham radio able to transmit and receive in a tornado slash storm safe room? Well, obviously he knows about ham radio because he knows that we call um, handy talkies, uh, meaning the portable uh, VHF, UHF radios, HTs, short for handy talkie. So he knows about ham radio. Um, he has a license. And he wants to know if he can use that radio in one of the storm rooms now, or a safe room. That covers a lot of ground. Um, in many parts of the South, uh, homes are not built with basements, or even for that matter, crawl spaces. Uh, there's a slab on the ground. Uh, this is coming out in California too. Um, at first people thought that uh, it would be safer to put a house on a little bit of a foundation and they found that earthquakes, the houses on the slabs actually did better. And they don't have the earthquake problem back east, but they do have flooding problems and they do have tornadoes and some really wicked weather. Now, what you often see on TV, like through the South, Alabama, Mississippi, Tennessee, all these places like this, that in the garage, there is a concrete lined um, sunken safe room, if you will, tornado room, that an entire family, upon a tornado being imminent, and you can hear them, they're very, very loud, uh, most people compare the sound of a tornado coming through to a, the sound of a freight train going by. And if you've ever stood close to a freight train, you, you know what I mean. Um, it's a hole. And it's lined in concrete and there's steps going down into it. And there's just enough room for a family of, say, five to go down into it and pull the storm doors down over them. Now, I believe the storm doors are usually made of wood and they'd be latched somehow in place. So even if the house is entirely blown off the foundation, they're safe, okay? They're safe. Now, there are other uh, more sturdy uh, things that are made. Uh, the term safe room usually comes from a place to retreat to if there is a villain of some kind in the home that you can go into that cannot be broken into uh, without some serious tools or serious uh, effort. And uh, my understanding is that those are in apartments and things like that, and they will often be made of wood, uh, you know, good thick plywood or something all around it and so on. So the answer is, can you take a ham radio in there and communicate? Well, let's talk about who you're going to communicate with and how they know where you are. You can sense that there's gonna have to be some advanced planning here. Uh, can a radio, an HT, get through a wood roof? Yes. Can it get through a steel roof, if those are steel doors? Probably not. Being down and surrounded by concrete with no exit for the RF signals is like being literally underground. And RF does not like to propagate through the ground, especially VHF, UHF. Okay. Um, you'd have to get down into the really, really, really low frequencies in order for that to happen. Um, and there are for like uh, the U.S. Navy to contact its submarines, actually put its antennas, which were miles long, to be a half wavelength, uh, put them underground and uh, they work pretty well. 
but that's not what we're dealing with here. So the question is, all right, you are in your safe room. There's been a tornado. You can't open the safe room door because the house has collapsed on it. And you would like to let somebody know that you're there so that you can be rescued. Who do you call? Who do you talk to on the radio? Now, tornadoes, most tornadoes, most tornadoes um, are not that, the swath they leave is not that wide. It can be as few as 50 feet. It can be for an F5, EF5 hurricane, it can be as wide as a mile. But there is a very good chance that repeaters that are scattered around the area uh, will be up and running, okay? Uh, maybe on backup power, whatever, but if they're more than a mile away from the path of the tornado, they're physically okay. And if there's backup power for them, they can work. Um, and you can have a list of those. You can have your club memberships. You can have done drills with your local ARES, which you are, of course, a member of, right? To know what to do, assuming that that radio can get out if held close to that wooden roof, because the wood will not uh, inhibit your radio signal very much. Steel will, but wood will not. Um, there are things that you can try to do. You can uh, pre-position an antenna uh, in, on, in or on something that is not likely to be blown over. Like you can run a coax out into the backyard and a little concrete pillar with a, um, you know, something that'll hold a, a, a little quarter wave antenna and uh, what are the chances it'll be blown over? Well, it could be hit by debris uh, from something else, but it might be something that's free and clear, and at least running that coax out, you can get a little bit of a signal out anyway, if not your full power, okay? Your HT, of course, is always sitting in the charger, although with lithium batteries, you can't really do that. Um, you will want some form of power in your, uh, in your hidey hole. Um, so who are you going to contact? Well, if you can get to a repeater, you can just contact somebody. The thing, of course, is that the repeaters will be busy. And if you don't have a strong signal, you may uh, find it hard to break in because FM tends to accept the stronger signal and ignore the weaker one. Another thing that you can do if your club has, say, an ARES plan or an emergency plan or something like that, it can plot on a map the location of hams who are participating so that they can see at a moment's notice this tornado went right over um, Stephen's house and they particularly want to see if they can hear from Stephen and they know that Stephen will be trying such and such frequencies at such and such a time. Okay, that would work because then everybody else stops transmitting while they try to hear what may be a very faint transmission from Stephen. Okay, so planning is important. Being a member of a group is important. And if you are part of that group and your home is not hit by the tornado, then of course you get on the radio and implement the plan to figure out uh, what to do. And if you are working with ARES, you've got ARES, RACES, OXCOM, whatever the local name for it is. Um, there will be somebody at the emergency management center who went there as soon as the tornado watch was uh, uh, proclaimed and uh, they will know what the track of the tornado is. Okay, so they will know um, where to look for hams and who to listen to for hams and so on. Now, safe rooms are a little different because, um, you know, unlike with a tornado 
uh, little shelter or cellar or whatever you may have, um, you don't know in advance that you may find yourself in there. And the easiest way to get help is, rather than use a ham radio, is to call 911 on your cell phone. Okay. And that should be built into the plans for the safe room. Um, the safe room, if you have to retreat to a safe room, you need to be able to get out with the cell signal. So the, whoever builds the safe room and so on, you need one wall to be an outside wall so you can get through it uh, to a cell tower or something like that. You need to try that in advance, you know, by calling your sister in Kansas or whatever. You don't need to... Uh, practice calling 911. Uh, they have enough practice uh, responding to that. Um, but again, the ham type thing still does work. If you have a list of repeaters, <clears throat> cell phone doesn't work, cell phone battery is dead, you left the cell phone in the other room while you retreated into the safe room, but your handy talkie is stored in the safe room and kept charged and so on. And this is a case where having a wire going to an antenna on the roof is a very good idea because now we're not talking about something that's going to blow everything over. I've got to tell you, as far as the tornado, I have never experienced a tornado. My son came very close to experiencing one on the day he graduated from middle school and my wife was about a quarter mile away at a Safeway which is not very far from the King Supers that was recently in the news. By the way, our local city market is part of the Kroger chain, um, so as is King Supers, and so there's a little memorial that they put in inside their foyer to the uh, people who lost their lives in that. I thought it was very touching. Um, but my wife was there. She saw the tornado. It was like a EF a million. It was a real tiny one. It was the kind of it hit your roof. It might pull one shingle off. Um, but it went through right next to where she knew my son was for his graduation. So they didn't get to do any of the games for graduation day because they all had to stay in uh, inside in case there was another tornado that came through. It's very rare for tornadoes to form near mountains. Very rare. And we don't see them here. And I grew up in California and earthquakes don't bother me, but tornadoes scare the living bejeebers out of me. So anyway, uh, Stephen, I'm trying to answer your question here. Can it be done? Yes, it's difficult. You won't have a strong signal. Um, if you can put in some antenna in there that goes out away from the house and is independently held erect even near the ground, that can be good. The biggest problem with it's not blowing the house completely off the foundation because then it's easy to exit the safe room and, and you're safe. It's when the debris from the home falls on that and you're stuck in there. Now, I suspect that the police know to that, you know, in a particular neighborhood, how all the houses were constructed with their uh, tornado or storm uh, safe rooms. The biggest thing that would scare me would be uh, flooding uh, at the same time. So you want this to be on a slightly raised platform so that floodwaters out here don't get in into that. Well, that was kind of a somber ass Dave there, but you know, ham radio saves lives. And um, if you are prepared, um, you shall not fear. Um, so be prepared, work this out with your other club members. If uh, there's nothing going on there, volunteer to start something and carry it through so that there is some mechanism as part of the ARES plan and uh, the county uh, or city disaster preparedness plan uh, to where hams can be heard, found, and rescued. So 
If you'd like to help support this channel financially, you certainly may do so. Go to decastlercom support. There are a lot of ways there that you can do that. If you would like to uh, uh, subscribe, I invite you to do that. I'm almost to 90,000 subscribers, and I'm hoping to get up over 100,000 here because when I get to 100,000, I get this really cool plaque from YouTube. Neat. So, until we next meet, 73.